Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika. In today's video, I am going to be doing a full face using my favorite products from 2020. Some of these were new releases throughout the year and some of them are just absolute old favorites that have been a staple in my collection. So if you're excited to see what I've got in front of me, then give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. Okay, so I'm just going to be <laughs> basic Tanika and my favorite primer of the year is the L'Oreal Infallible anti redness Primer. This has been my favorite for too long now. I just can't get enough of it. If this happens to be your first time hearing me talk about this primer, well, listen up. It is just the best primer at neutralizing redness. I have tried quite a few because my skin is very red and I've got these blemishes everywhere and because I'm so fair, my foundations don't really have enough pigment to cover that up on its own. So using something that neutralizes the color really helps when it comes to the coverage of my foundation and concealer. So I've just blended it out on one side here and look at the difference. I know this is a little distracting, but look at the difference between the two. It's not going to leave your face looking really green. You can't see it underneath your foundation. It is just one of my favorite products when it comes to makeup. Now I have normal combination skin. I did try out this primer on my sister and she has rather dry skin and it did not work well for her. It kind of clung to those dry patches. So if you have dry skin, I would probably steer away from this. My recommendation for dry skin would be this one here by Rimmel. It's the Insta CC Primer. This doesn't neutralize as well, but it still does the job and the texture is just a bit more creamy. For foundations, I feel like this year I did try out a few, but nothing really stood out to me. So I did stick to some of my favorites. I also had a lot in my collection that I wanted to use up. So I did spend a lot of time just going through those foundations rather than really getting into some new ones. But two of my absolute go-tos throughout the year have been the L'Oreal True Match Foundation in the shade 0.5N Porcelain. This is a beautiful mildy, mildium. This has a medium but buildable coverage, leaves a really beautiful, fresh, slightly dewy finish but nothing too dewy it is just an amazing foundation it comes in a great range there are 40 shades and it has just been a go-to of mine another one is the maybelline superstay foundation and this is in the shade 03 true ivory now this foundation is a full coverage. It does have more of a matte finish, but still with a slightly bit of a sheen. It's not like overly matte. This is one of my favorite foundations for the warmer months because it's super long lasting. So they have been my go-tos. I was looking through my drawers though for a foundation that was a real standout for me. And it's actually this one that I tried from the Kmart brand OXX Bloom. This is the Luminous Luxe Foundation and I am absolutely taken back by this one. Now I have the shade 1.1 Swan and this is a super fair shade. So it works great for me, but the shade range in total is not very good. There are like five or six shades, so there's that. But if you're as fair as me and you wanna give it a try, this foundation leaves the most beautiful, glowy finish. It has more of a medium coverage, but you can build it up in some areas. It just looks so natural on the skin. I love it. So I'm going to apply this one today. I found myself reaching for my beauty blender over a kabuki brush to blend out my foundation this year as well. I used to be all about the kabuki brush for blending out my foundation. I found it just gave much better coverage and then I would go over the top with my sponge. But throughout the year, I've just been loving a sponge only. I just, I don't know what it is about it. I guess I'm becoming more okay with not having extremely full coverage 
at all times. And the sponge just leaves such a beautiful finish. It looks very, like the foundation looks much more natural on the skin because I feel like it it blends into it and not sits on top of it with a brush. So this is what the two layers looks like. You can still see a few blemishes here, but look at that glowy finish. It is just so beautiful. And if you enjoy a medium coverage, then I think you'll really like this. Another little downside though, besides the shade range, is that it does have quite a floral scent to it. So it's pretty fragranced. You can smell it when you're applying it, but it doesn't linger throughout the day. I think one of the things that got me so shook about this foundation is how long lasting it is. Usually cheaper foundations do not last at all, but this can get me through an entire shift at work and it still looks great. For concealer, another one that I just have not put down is the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. If you love full coverage, you are going to be obsessed with this. I say this all the time, but for ages, people were trying to find dupes for the Tarte Shape Tape when that was all the bloody rage. And I tried a lot of concealers also trying to dupe it, but this, this is the only one that compares to Tarte Shape Tape. So if you're all about that full coverage life, you will love this. It is around $30 full price, which I think is pretty expensive for the drugstore. So always keep an eye out for a sale, but it does come in a pretty big bottle. I think it's around 10 mils from memory. I can't see it on here, but I go in with the shade 322 Ivory. There is a shade Fairer. I'll actually swatch both of them for you. This year I found myself steering away from the super, super fair concealers. I just started to feel like they made my under eyes look a bit too stark and bright and like I'm fair enough. I don't need that. And I also found I wasn't getting the coverage I desired with the super, super fair concealers either. So this shade here is 320 Porcelain and this is 322 Ivory. So this is the one that I love and use. Use and love. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this concealer is just the perfect one to chuck in your handbag as well for touch-ups. What I like to do is take this brush here, it's by Morphe, it's an eyeshadow brush, it's the E22, but it's a synthetic bristle, it's kind of dense, so when I'm out and about and if I need a little touch up, I just like to tap in there and like fix up around my nose or around my mouth. It's also really good for covering blemishes. If I'm going for a no makeup makeup look and I just want to cover my pimps, this is the concealer I use. So I'm just going to use a little bit to actually cover up this big one here. The coverage of this concealer is just amazing. If you have drier under eyes, you might not like it, but the next concealer I'm going to talk about will be for you. So a concealer I fell in love with this year is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. And this one has a satin finish. So they originally released the 16 hour camo, which was a matte finish, full coverage, and my freaking love it. But again, the shades I have are just a bit too light for my liking now. So when I bought this concealer, I did pick up some deeper shades. So I have light ivory and fair beige. So this is fair beige and this is light ivory. Now the swatches, I felt like the colors looked a little peachy and quite deep, especially this one but they both work really well for me. They blend into my skin tone. My under eyes don't look too stark and bright. It has a really good coverage, but also gives you that nice hydrating finish. So it has just been an absolute standout for me. I'm going to go in with the shade Light Ivory today. This year, I've also really toned down how much concealer I use under my eyes. I did used to go in with a huge triangle amount because that's just what everyone did but it's just too much and so now I go in with a small dot like I did blend it out and then if I need more I will add another layer 
I have a lot of fine lines under my eyes and I found that it was just settling into them so much. Once I added powder on top, it was just like crepe city. And it was because I was using way too much product. For powders, you know I have to include the Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil. This has just been a staple in my makeup collection now for years. It's a really beautiful satin finish powder, so it doesn't leave an overly dry matte look. It does have quite a bit of a glow to it. The shade of this is super fair as well, so it works amazingly for me. I have started to decrease how much I use though. I used to go in with my sponge and just like smash it all over my face. Now I like to go in with just a little bit under my eyes, especially when I am using a glowy concealer because I'm still going to get that glowy finish. I like to use it on my cheeks and just a little bit on my forehead. I try and avoid the center of my face with it now because it does have a glowy finish and I don't want to look overly shiny. So I've started to strategically place this powder. And then a powder that I only tried later on in the year, but oh my god, I flip and love it, is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder. I just opened a nice new one for today's video. So I have the shade Fair. Now, this is where I'm a little confused because Priceline only stocks two shades, but Chemist Warehouse stocks four. So I did have to pick this one up from Chemist Warehouse. I've already smashed through an entire compact. This powder just leaves the most flawless, smooth look to the skin. It keeps your makeup in place all day and I just can't get over how airbrushed it makes the skin look, but without feeling too heavy or cakey. It is just... It is good. So for my under eyes, I've got a little bit of the Models Prefer powder on my sponge. And I'm just going to lightly tap that under there. And then I'm going to take a bit more and start setting around my face. And then I'm going to take a fluffy brush with the CoverGirl powder to set the rest of my face. For bronzer, my absolute favorite of the year was the Fenty Cream Bronzer, and I have the shade Butter Biscuit. This is what it looks like here. This is the lightest, I'd say, bronzing shade. There is one underneath this called Amber, but it's very cool tone, so I would say it's more used for contouring. Now, I have really been into the cream products this year and it was a bit hard trying to find a bronzer that was suitable for my fair skin tone, but when Fenty released these, I just... <laughs> she just got it so right. This shade works really well for really fair to light skin tones. I have seen so many people on YouTube use this shade. It works really well for a variety of the fair to light skin tones. I feel like it just has the perfect amount of pigment. It's really easy to work with and blend. It doesn't dry really fast, so you do have time to work with it. And what I love most is that you can apply it over the top of powder and it's not going to pick up what's underneath. I love using powder, like I need to use powder. I need my makeup to be set in place. Without powder, it's moving around. So having a cream product that's going to give me that more glowy, radiant finish on top of my powder, it's just, it's a win-win. So the brush I've been loving with this is my Sigma Dome Buffer, and this is a duo fiber brush. The bristles in this brush are packed rather densely, but there's still quite a lot of movement so that you can blend the product out. If you're after a brush that's a bit more easily accessible if you live in Australia, or just more affordable in general, then this is the Eco Tools. I'm not 100% of the name, but it's also a duo fiber brush. They aren't as tightly packed, but again, a lot of movement up top so you can blend the product out. So I just like to go in with a little bit at a time and just use stippling motions to blend the product out and then build the product up. 
If cream bronzers aren't really your thing, then one of the bronzers I found this year that I fell in love with is this Essence Contouring Duo Palette. This was super affordable. It was only around $7. It is in the shade Lighter Skin. And so you can see it comes with two different shades. They are both very cool toned. Now to a lot of people, you might look at this and be like, what's that even gonna do? But it is a very, very fair bronze shade and mixed with this shade oh it is just so good if you are extremely fair like me so for days if you just want a slight bronze or even if you're new to bronzing this is a really good option and then if you want something a little deeper you've got this one here I just love that they are more cool toned because a lot of bronzers, especially in the drugstore, can be very, very warm and it just does not work for my skin tone. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this over the top. I like to tap into both shades and then just lightly brush back and forward. I was quite surprised by how good the formula is for Essence. It's super blendable. It doesn't feel dry and chalky at all. It is amazing. It's not patchy either. Now when it comes to blush, I've got a few here to show you and they are all cream products. Again, I have just turned a new page with my makeup preferences and I have been loving creams. My absolute favorite has been the Savvy Cheek and Lip Color, but I think they've discontinued this because I cannot find it anywhere. And I am devastated because this is all I have left. <sighs> I wanted to wear this on my wedding day. Like, do I save it? <laughs> Savvy did release these duos that comes with a blush and a highlighter, but the blush shade just isn't the same. It's a little bit deeper, still the great formula, but it's just, it's not the same. Some other cream blushes that I have been loving is this Maybelline Cheek Heat. This one actually comes in probably the best shade range from all the ones that I'm going to show you. I'm pretty sure there are five or six to choose from. This one does dry a little faster than the rest, so you do have to work quick, but I actually really like this shade. I have a 20 Rose Flush. Next, I have the Emco Beauty Cheek and Lip Tint. This is in the shade Tango. Emco Beauty only has, I think, two shades and neither of them are the exact, like my favorite preferred shade. But this is still a really nice formula, quite sheer and very glowy. And then we have the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs. In Australia, they only released these two shades and again, neither of them are my favorite but the formula of these is beautiful. I find they apply best with your finger. These are super sheer, probably the most sheer out of all I've just shown you, but they leave the most beautiful, just fresh and glowy finish. If you are into more of like natural makeup, then you will love these. I think I'll go in with the Maybelline Cheek Heat, considering that it does come in the most shades. With these products as well, you only need a tiny, tiny amount. So I've just blended that out. As you can see, it looks quite sheer, but look at that glow just in the swatch. Oh, I love it. And then the brush I've been using for all my cream cheek products is this Sigma Contour and Blush Brush. So again, it's the Duo Fiber, very, very flexible bristles. They blend out the product so beautifully. And what I love about this is that it is cut on that angle. So it sits really nicely on the face. So I'm just going to dip that into the product on the back of my hand and just lightly tap to build it up. For highlighter, again, I've just been all about the creams, so I do have a few here to show you. First up is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand, and this is in the shade Spotlight. Now, I don't usually go for more high-end products. I love my drugstore, but this was something I've been wanting to try for a while, and I splurged, and it is beautiful. This is a really nice pale gold color, which I think is my favorite 
shade for highlighters. It just leaves the most beautiful glow. Another one is the Savvy Highlighter from the duo I showed earlier. So this is what the shade looks like. All of these are actually more of that gold tone. So let me tap it out just here for you. This one is a little lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury. And I think it gives a bit more of a wet look, like a glossy finish. And then one that is newer to my collection, but I have not stopped using, is the Rimmel Glow Stick. And this is in the shade 001 Bubbly. I think I'm actually going to use this today. This is what the shade looks like. Let me swatch it on my hand for you. This is it here <laughs> that you can see that strip. So again, a lighter gold shade, very sheer and it leaves a very wet look. So what I like to do is go in with the bum of my sponge, tap a little bit there and then lightly tap it on my cheekbones. Look at that. Now, if you prefer powder highlighters, one that I was actually really impressed with by the drugstore this year is the Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter. Now, I have the shade Daybreak Glimmer. This is more of a deeper gold. It's like a smidge too dark for me. I can make it work, but I need to go in with a very light hand. So if you are as fair as me or even fairer, I just be very careful with this but if your skin tone is more in the light category then this will work great for you i absolutely love the pattern that they have in the pan i think it gives it a really nice high-end feel it is such a smooth and buttery formula it feels beautiful that is just one swipe in the pan let me blend it out on my hand here if you were to build this up, it could be very metallic, but sheared out, it just leaves a really nice, fresh, glossy look. I find a lot of drugstore highlighters to be very dry and chalky, so I was super impressed with this. In Australia, I'm not sure how many shades there are, maybe two, but I'm pretty sure in the US, the range is a little bigger. Now for brows, I pretty much stuck to the same thing all year. It was either a choice of these two brow gels. I have the Essence Make Me Brow in the shade 01 Blondie Brows or the Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt Gel in the shade Blonde. I use the Essence all the time, so let me go in with the Maybelline. This also has a incy, tinsy, tinsy, wincy, incy, wincy, tinsy. I don't know, it has a little wand. <laughs> I find the Maybelline one doesn't have as many like fibers as the Essence, so it doesn't like thicken up the brows as much, but it does a really good job of tinting them and keeping them in place. My go-to brow pencil of the year has been the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim in the shade Blonde. I am just loving the micro tip brow pencils lately. This is what it looks like. It is super tiny. I love it because you can just be so precise. I like to draw under my brow first to fill in this little gappy area here and then just do small little strokes to fill it in. It's also really good for the arch because I can draw little flicks here and make it look very natural. Now, because I draw in so much of my brow, I found that they can look a bit too fake and you can see a lot of the pencil. So this year I found the Emco Beauty Feathering Brow Pen. I have tried so many high-end versions of this and I was so happy to finally find an affordable version because I fly through this. So this has a brush tip applicator and you draw little strokes in your brows and it just makes them look so much more like real hair. It's just, it's amazing. If you love that like feathery, bushy brow look, <laughs> you gotta get yourself one of these. So I like to start at the front here and just flick up. This is where there's like the least amount of hair. So I'm gonna draw some in.
Now when it comes to eyeshadows, although I dipped into a little bit of colour this year, I feel like I really toned it down and have just been loving the neutrals. The Astralis palettes are some of my favourite, well, my absolute favourite from the drugstore. And this year I played a lot with the Glamour eyeshadow palette. So this one here has a bunch of neutral shades. I loved these lighter shades. I love that it's got a bit of a cool tone here and lots of beautiful, really easy to use shimmer shades. This was one that I dipped into a lot. I felt like I just really enjoyed the simple neutral eyeshadow looks. I did steer away from more really warm tones and was looking for more cool tones. I had been on the hunt for a really nice cool tone palette and then Colourpop come to my rescue and released the That's Tote palette. I don't think I've put this down since I got it. I was after something that had a lot more lighter cool tones rather than a lot of deep cool tones, which I found like that's what I was finding. A lot of the cool tone palettes on the market were mostly deeper cool tone mattes. And I was like, I want some lights. So I have been loving this ColourPop palette. The formula of these shadows are amazing for how cheap they are. Well, by the time you convert it to Australian and pay for shipping as a little. <laughs> but anyway, I love all the shades in this palette and think it's a really good option if you love cool tones. All right, I just quickly did one eye off camera. I decided to go in with the Astralis Glamour palette. I feel like I've been wearing my ColourPop That's Tote palette in like my last four videos. So I thought I would spice it up a bit with a light pink neutral look. <laughs> So I'm going to take this shade here with a nice big fluffy brush and blend it throughout my crease and then deepen up the outer corner with this shade here. And then I'm taking this shimmer shade here for the lid. And then I'll also run those two matte shades under the lower lash line, as well as a little bit of this brown, because I do like to deepen up my lower lash line. Another eye product I have been loving is this e.l.f. Liquid Glitter Eyeshadow, and this is in the shade Flirty Birdie. So these are similar to the Stila Liquid Glitters, but they are only $10, and they are beautiful. So this is what a thick swatch looks like full of glitter. They are so beautiful. How I like to apply it though is with a brush. Let me get one. So I've got a little bit there. I tap my brush in and I just like to pat a little bit of glitter onto my lid. When the light hits this, oh, <laughs> it just looks so good and it takes any eyeshadow look like to the next level. Even if you were to apply it in a thicker layer, like with the applicator, it doesn't crack or get dry at all, which again is a problem that you come into with the cheaper liquid glitter shadows. For mascara, you probably already know by now that my favorite is the Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift. This just has the most amazing mascara wand. It's nice and big and fluffy and it does everything I want in a mascara. They are lengthened. They are separated. There's so much volume and thickness to them. The formula isn't too wet, but it's not too dry. It doesn't flake or like transfer. It's just... Like, can we just take a moment for the lashes? And lastly, for the lips, I have been obsessed with gloss. My absolute favorite has been this BYS Glass Glow in the shade Rose Colored Glasses. Another gloss that is quite new to my collection, but I have been loving is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Moon. So these do look quite deep in the tubes, but they just give the perfect amount of tint to the lips and the gloss 
but the shine is just next level. So this one here is the BYS and this is the Maybelline. Now, when it comes to actual lipstick colors, I've just been sticking to my go-tos like MAC Blankety, the Astralis Girl Boss Empower, but one that I did try out this year and love is the Huda Beauty Liquid Lipstick in the shade Wifey. Now, I've always loved the Huda Beauty Liquid Lipstick formula. It's very lightweight and very comfortable for a matte liquid lipstick. This shade here is a beautiful nude and I can't get enough. This is what it looks like here. It is just stunning. Today, I think though, I am just going to go in with a gloss because that is what I have been loving. So I'm going to use the BYS Glass Glow. I feel like this gloss is quite hydrating as well, which is good. It's got a nice big doe foot as well. Love that. All right, well, this is the finished look using my favorite products from 2020. If you enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I have had so much fun creating content this year and appreciate every single one of you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing here on my channel. I really appreciate your support. If you have any video requests for the new year, make sure you leave me a comment down below as I would love to hear what you guys want to see from me. If you've used any of these products, whether you love or hate them, also leave me a comment down below because I want to hear your opinions and also let me know what products you dipped into the most in the year 2020. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.